Okay, Bible study on Galatians. And so what I was, uh, after a Bible study that we did not too long ago, last Friday, a couple days ago, um, I was talking about in Matthew 6, how it says to, to do your prayers in secret and to go to your prayer closet and say your prayers in secret. And so um, I prayed to the Holy Spirit on that because it, it seemed to, um, you know, I, I, it, it doesn't seem that like all prayers have to be in secret. And the Holy Spirit immediately said to me, no, a lot of what Isaiah writes, and not just Isaiah, but a lot of what Isaiah writes are prayers and are praises and are worship. And you absolutely 100% are called upon to, um, you know, speak scripture out loud. So my prayer to start this Bible study today is Isaiah 12. It's only six verses. Let's read it. Isaiah 12 and verse 1, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song, he also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. So that's going to be my prayer. Whenever I want to say a prayer out loud, that will be one of the go-tos. I'll probably do a video on all of Isaiah's prayers and praises of worship and all of that. But today, we are going to do, go through all six books of the Galatians through the concordance when it's necessary. In other words, we want to make sure we really understand the meanings of the words that Paul's going to tell us. Now, let me, I'm going to first, before I start reading Galatians, I want to summarize Galatians because Paul has already been to Galatia, uh, which today is in mid-Turkey, somewhere in, in Turkey. And so Paul has already been to Galatia. It's, it's years later, okay? It's, it's roughly uh, 48 to 50 A.D., and he's writing this letter. He, he was there in 46 AD. And he's gone back now to Jerusalem. Because I'm just setting the scene so we understand as we read it. Paul is writing a letter concerning stuff that's going on in that day. And so if we don't understand what's going in that day, we're not quite getting, you know, why Paul is so brokenhearted and angry. This is Paul's angriest letter that he's going to write. His Out of his 13 epistles, this is... The most passionate, and I say passionate because he's so angry, how they have perverted and converted his word. That's not what he, you know, Galatia has completely overturned the, the uh, teachings of Paul. When he was there three years prior, they've overturned it and they've turned it into something else. And Paul is, he's just furious. He's got a righteous anger about this. And so Paul has... Uh, return to Jerusalem. He's talking to Peter and James and some other people. You can read all of that. Uh, this time in Galatia, what's going on here is Acts 15 and 16. So if you're going to read Galatians, back it up with Acts 15 and 16, because they all, it's the same time period, what's going on here. And so I'm not going to read Acts today. We don't have time to do that. I want to get through all of Galatians because there's so much being said. So I want to first do an overview um, why Paul is brokenhearted. They've taken the, the teachings of Jesus Christ and they've turned it into that you have to follow the laws of the Torah. That's why he's so angry because they're saying they have to be circumcised, they have to eat kosher, they have to do the Sabbath, they're following that. They, they, have, they have turned over the words of Jesus and they've turned it back into the law of Moses. And they're saying, if you, now if you're going to be a Christian, if you want to call yourself a Christian, you actually have to become a Jew. And you have to follow the ways of the Jews and the law of Moses because they did not, the Jews, recognize Messiah as their, their Messiah. They didn't recognize Jesus as the Messiah, even though they're reading Isaiah. And Isaiah is super clear. <laughs> Isaiah nails it. Isaiah's accuracy on the details of the first coming of the Son of Man is incredible. I'm going to do a video on that uh, tomorrow. Be looking for Isaiah, the prophet and the prophecies in the book of Isaiah. And I'll just go through the history of all of that. And so what they've done is instead of 
it being about the fruits of the Spirit and that we have to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit, um, the, the Jews um, has turned it around. And so let me give you a summary of the six books of, of uh, Galatians, and then we'll go ahead and read it. So in Galatians 1 and 2, everybody, what Paul is addressing here in his letter, everybody's embracing a lie. It's not sound doctrine. The Jews have infiltrated with the laws of the Torah. Paul says he is sent... He has, to, he has to proclaim, can I remind you? In other words, he's, he's reminding him, look, I didn't, I didn't come here by any, any flesh of man. I didn't come by you know, flesh and blood. I, I am here because I have the spirit of the risen Jesus Christ in me. And so Paul is reminding, when I was there in your day, I was coming to you with the spirit of Jesus Christ. I, I came to you by the revelation of Jesus. This is not the, the, the law has been fulfilled by Jesus. It's been overturned. And so that's how the Galatians 1 and 2 is all about. And even here, Paul will tell you, look, I, even if an angel, even if an angel from God comes down and tells you some, some type of scripture, some type of verse, no, rebuke that angel. Absolutely not. That angel, accurse that angel. So here's the one place, because I've heard a lot of prophets out there say, you know, an angel told me that God said this. And it's like, no, <laughs> if an angel's coming to you and telling you something God says, rebuke that angel. So this is a good reminder in Galatians about um, holy angels won't do that. But if you think, you think, because a fallen angel can appear as an angel of light. So if, if something that you interpret or consider or you think is an angel and is telling you something about scripture, something about the word of God, rebuke it. It's not. It's, it's something other than. I know fallen angels, and I know their, um, I guess I would say their agendas and how they operate. So, and right now I'm under a, a dark angel attack, and I have been since Friday. That's all right. I will deal with that. So Peter, Peter at this time, now what, what also Paul is addressing, again, he's in Jerusalem, he's writing a letter to Galatia, and he's addressing, look, I'm dealing with Peter on my end. Because Peter is doing it also here in Jerusalem. And so Peter and Paul will have a fallout. We'll see later on in Galatians. But that's what's going on. He's, he's addressing, look, I just arrived in Jerusalem. I've heard about this from James and others, Simon. And, um, and I, I've confronted Peter. I'll, I'll face down Peter and, you know, call him out on his hypocrisy. And what's happening here is Peter, um, in his first start, when he first started teaching, Right when he started, when he took the, the scripture, the gospel out to the people, he was mingling and eating and celebrating among the Gentiles. Well, he fell under Jewish peer pressure and he stopped mingling or eating or having anything to do with Gentiles. And Paul is furious. He's in Jerusalem. He's like, oh my God, this is happening everywhere. You can you imagine Paul right now? He's like, everything I've done has been corrupted. Like, no, he, he's already known about Ephesus. Um, he, and, and, I mean, he knows about this stuff and Galatia is one of the last ones he hears about. And so, um, and he is at this time with Titus. Okay. So just give me a little history, a little backdrop. So as we go through it, you could kind of be, you know, sitting beside Paul, is he writing this? And I just want to, you know, throw this out there that as he's writing this, it's a very long letter. It's six chapters in his day. That's a long letter. He's writing it on papyrus. That papyrus that was found was was uh, said to have been uh, right around 48 to 50 A.D. That's when they 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 you know his his papyrus was collected and saved, and he's writing with a reed, right, with cuttlefish ink. So I just want you to keep that in mind. I'm what, I just you know historically accurately i just want to put us you know at that desk where paul is writing to galatian and saying you foolish galatians what has what has gone on here you've got it all backwards so okay that's that summarizes one and two we're going to read it but that summarizes one and two three and four he's going to introduce you are now a new family in christ everyone we're all the seed of abraham and jacob and we've now become all the nations and one of the one of the best verses is in 319, where the law is for, uh, where the law is overturned, and we're all considered the seed of Abraham and Jacob. We're all, you know, all nations have now become one. 
And so that's what he's reminding the Galatians. He's simply reminding, what did I teach you? It's the exact opposite of what's going on here today. And then in 5 and 6, he, you, he's telling you, listen, Christians learn. Um, he's going to explain about the fruits of the Spirit and walking in the steps of the Spirit and the ways of the Spirit in order for you to, and, and that you must cultivate your first fruits. And so uh, that, that Jesus came to overturn the law um, on our behalf, and, and we are to be the first fruits um, of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what is he talking about here. So that, that's, that's the background. So let's go, go ahead and start reading. Um, let me pull up my, let me just go ahead and start reading Galatians in chapter 1. Okay, so now you have a little history, a little background from where, where he's coming from. We're kind of in the days of Paul right now. Let's just kind of be here, 50 AD, in the days of Paul. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world, according to the will, God, the will of God and our Father. Even in Paul's day, the world is evil. We always think of it as being, um, you know, like the days that we're in now, we can look around and see how evil of a world we're in. It's never not been that. It's never not been evil, not, not, not since from day one. There's never really been, and there, there won't be. There won't be until we get to, you know, the millennial kingdom and beyond. Verse 4, who gave himself for our sins, I said that already. Verse 5, to whom be glory forever and ever, amen. I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ under another gospel. They're in another gospel. Let's go to the concordance. Let's just read gospel here. Uh, that, that is 2098. Gospel is a reward of good tidings. The glad tidings of the kingdom of God soon to be set up and subsequently also of Jesus, the Messiah, the founder of this kingdom after the death of Christ. So that's what gospel means. That's a nice, I like that. That's a nice meaning of gospel. Verse 7, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you who would pervert the gospel of Christ. Okay, this is the Sadducees and Pharisees in the day. So we still have the Sadducees and Pharisees, and, and they have not accepted that Jesus, the first coming, they did not recognize him. They did not accept his death and his resurrection. And they're trying to turn all of the so-called Christians in Galatia back towards Moses and the law and the Torah. So that's what's happening. But though, this is one of my favorites here. Verse 8, Galatians 1 verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So again, I hear social media prophets, they, they do a lot of this, you know, angel of God came to me kind of stuff. Um, and says this, you know, God said, whatever. Um, they are messengers, but they, you cannot pervert the word here. So they can be a messenger from God and tell you something, but you, you don't pervert the word. You don't change scripture. That's not what they're doing. They're giving you a message from God. They're not changing scripture. I've heard that before. People saying that. Verse 9. As we said before, say, I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that he have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For yet, for yet, please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So, you see... This is kind of like he understands what Peter has done. And so Peter having, you know, wanting to please men. Peter succumbed to Jewish peer pressure because Peter is a Jew. And the Jews are, you know, are hovering over Peter. It's like, what are you doing? You can't eat and mingle with Gentiles. And so this is what Paul is setting himself aside. No, I don't, I don't seek to please men. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. That's what's being said here. So he's, he's, call, he's going to call out Peter a couple of times here. But I certify you, brethren, and you can also, again, Acts 15 and 16 is the companion to Galatians. So you, you, you want to read Galatians 
with, with Acts 15 and 16 next to you. So you can really kind of get a full picture. I love this verse, verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. He's saying, I didn't, I'm not bringing you the words of man. For in verse 12, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I love that. He's reminding them, what you're doing, this man-made stuff, is not sound doctrine. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which are apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now, the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Sicily, and was unknown by the face of the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which, which once he destroyed, and they glorify God in me. Galatians 2 First, starting with verse 1, the 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run and have or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So what's happening here is, again, the laws of Moses says you are to be circumcised. You are to eat kosher and keep the Sabbath. And so that's what's happening. He's pointing out what, what's being, everything that's going on in Galatia, all the Gentiles are being circumcised. And they're following the Torah. They're eating kosher. But they're becoming Jews. So instead of becoming Christians, as Paul left them, they're becoming Jews. And so he's, here he's pointing out, look, uh, Titus is Greek. He's not compelled to be circumcised. So he's saying Titus, Titus has the sound doctrine in him. We can trust Titus. He has sound doctrine. He is following closely, precisely, not closely, precisely what Paul is teaching. And Paul, he, where he says here again, um, you know, he has been communicating the gospel to them by grace. Okay, and so here in verse 4, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they may bring us into bondage so that's what the law of Moses is, is. when you hear Paul a lot of times he, instead of him saying the Torah or the law he's just going to use the word bondage it's the same thing think of the law the Torah uh, Moses all of that it's bondage it's a yoke on the neck so let me go to the concordance and let's read bondage to 615. To bring into bondage, enslave. To enslave to oneself, bring into bondage to oneself. They're, they're choosing to go back into bondage. Now, the reason the law was there was for judgment. And it was to, it was like a strict school teacher. He'll Paul later on say, this bondage is like a strict school teacher. It was needed in the Old Testament because of how wicked they were. They kept turning to idolatry. I mean, it was just nonstop. And so the law was needed as um, just because of their wicked ways, their perversion. I mean, it's just, it's just Old Testament stuff. And so that's what's being communicated here. Verse 5, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepts no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference, adding nothing to me, but contrarize 
when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So they're lying. They're adding to uh, Paul's words. Paul has found out that they've taken his teaching and they've added to it. That's eisegetical. So here is a, a good example of eisegetical versus exegetical. He's saying that I, I did not say that. You know, Peter is, is demonstrating that. But I did not say that. That's not my gospel. That's not sound doctrine. That's what he's pointing out here. Verse 8, For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me, Barnabas, the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Only they that we should remember the poor, the same which I also do forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So here he is. Paul is saying, look, I've already confronted Peter about this. All right. Uh, you know, Peter and I have had a falling out. You'll read that in Acts. Peter and him have a falling out. For before that certain came from James he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. So anyways, James is the brother of Jesus. So it's saying here, James, when, when he came to teach in this area, in, in Jerusalem, um, he's saying that Peter was eating with the Gentiles. He was mingling with them. So, but he withdrew, separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. That means fearing them which are the Jews, the fat, uh, sorry, the Pharisees and Sadducees of the day, the church leaders. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. What is dissimulation? Let's go to the concordance on that. Dissimulation is 5272. An answering and answer, the act, oh, the acting of a stage player, dissimulation, hypocrisy. Okay, so hypocrisy. <laughs> That's a much better word than dissimulation. Anyways, it's there. We, we all understand hypocrisy. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly, not uprightly. I'm just going to read. What's the meaning of uprightly? See if we see if that's in there. Uprightly, 3716, to walk in straight course, to act upright. Um, back to 14, verse 14. <clears throat> walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So here you're seeing what Paul is saying. You hypocrite. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's been overturned. There's no such thing anymore as the law. That slavery, that bondage is gone. Jesus paid the price on the cross for us that we are not under that law. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's the Holy Spirit. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's look up faith. This would be super clear. Faith is 4102 on the meaning of it. Conviction of the truth of anything. Belief. In the New Testament of a conviction or a belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, generally with the included idea of trust and holy fervor, born of faith and joined with it. Relating to God, the conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. Relating to Christ, a strong and welcome conviction or believe that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation and the kingdom of God, the religious beliefs of Christians. The belief is predominant idea or trust or confidence, whether in God or in Christ, bringing from faith the same, fidelity and faithfulness. Okay, and let's finish out Galatians 2, verse 21. I 
do I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So you see what he's saying here? He's like, come on, you fools. He's like, we're going to start verse 3 with like, who has bewitched you? Um, but here it is. Um, you know, it, 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 Christ came and did all of this work and, and, and suffered six hours on the cross and died and shed all of his blood and water. And you're still trying to say it's by law. So that means Christ is dead and vanity. All of this was for nothing. He's so beside himself. Can you imagine Paul in this day? He's, he's, just, he's had it. He's, he, he, his blood is boiling. Like he has a righteous indignation, a righteous anger here. Now let's, let's read next. This is my, one of my favorite lines in the Bible when it comes from Paul. Galatians 3 verse 1. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you? It's only 50 years after the crucifixion that, that plenty of people have seen this event and, and, and have, have gone out and talked about this event. I mean, you know, we're, we're still in the generation of Jesus Christ and they're bewitched. I got to look up bewitched in the concordance. Here we go. Bewitched is the number 940 to speak ill of one, to slander, to traduce him, to bring evil on one by feigning praise or an evil eye to charm and to bewitch. <laughs> Bewitching is going on in the days of Paul. This only what I learn of you, received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith. You are so foolish, having begun in the spirit. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? Yet if it be in vain, he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit, the Holy Spirit, just to make sure, let's just go to the concordance. Spirit just says spirit. 4151. The third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal with Father and the Son. Sometimes referred to in a way which emphasizes the personality and character of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. So we're super clear about that. Um, spirit. And worketh miracles among you, doeth he by works of the law or by hearing of faith, even as Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they are which of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So Jesus brought us, we are all one now. All the nations were all the seed of Abraham and Jacob. You'll hear him say that later on as well. And so it's like, no, there's, there's, no, there's no law. There's no separation. It's, it, we're all one. We're all going to be blessed. Verse 9, so then they which are the faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Now here the Paul is telling you the law is curse. Let's look up curse. Uh, 2671. An excrecation and impre, imprecation curse. Well, I don't know that that made that any clearer, but we all know what curse is. For it is written, cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do to them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. He, he's, he's, he's doing his very best here to say, listen, it's all about faith. Stop with this law stuff. Stop listening to the leaders of the church. Stop listening to the Jews, the Pharisees and Sadducees. No. Christ overturned that, and it's all about faith. And he's ha continually, in, in chapters 3 and 4, he's going to be reminding them of the spirit and of faith. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We we're going to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. You just have faith. Right here he's telling you. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. You're going to get the understanding and the wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. 
So he's saying, you can't take my words or the apostle words and, and you know, take away from it, disannul it, take away, and you can't add to it. So this is where the cemetery training, right? I call seminary, cemetery, cemetery training. That's where they do. They, they, they do a lot of eisegetical kind of teaching instead of exegetical, letting scripture uh, interpret scripture. And Paul is saying, no, no, don't do that. You, you stick to what I'm telling you. I, I have the revelation of Jesus Christ in me. You know, only the apostles, Jesus has chosen 12 apostles. We have the revelation. Now, Peter was a bad example for a time period, but he, he uh, you know, he listened to Paul. Now to Abraham, we'll do maybe next week, we'll have to do Peter. Um, and then we'll need to do Timothy and Titus and so on. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to the seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to the seed, thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. We see there at one point, God says in Genesis, you know, your seed, right? Your seed line will be as, as many as, it, you know, the sands of the beach or whatever, the ocean. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. Now he's here. He's going to let his words interpret his words. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, very righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. So here he's saying, Jesus is the faith. He's the seed. He came to ensure we will all be one seed line under Abraham. All nations, you know, all people, all tribes, all tongues, we will all be one under the seed line of Abraham and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wherefore... So Jesus was revealed, and he's pointing out that the Jews did not accept him. Wherefore, the law was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Remember I said earlier, wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. When I was saying the law is about the Old Testament, and it's about judgment, and it's about being a strict schoolmaster trying to keep the Israelites on task because they just kept falling away to idols, idolatry. But after... I'm sorry, did I read verse 24? Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that, faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster, for you are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. By the way, this letter is written in Greek. Uh, bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now, the dark angel will take that verse right there, and they will make it, uh, make it. Uh, what's the word I want, accepting for everybody. In other words, the LGBTQ community. You see that they will eisegetically ice take that verse out, for example, and make it suit their agenda. Just as one example. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians in verse 4. <clears throat> now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so... We, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. 
and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So he's trying to overturn everything that, you know, three years of Galatia now has moved away from the words of Paul. They've moved away from the gospel, the sound doctrine, and they're, they're following Jews. Howbeit then, when ye, knew, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and the beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? Bondage is the law. You observe days, months, times, and years. This is a reference right here in Paul's day to astrology. That's what this is referencing. For me, that's where I am. When I read it, I thought this is, this is they're, they're looking what they were doing in that day. If you understand that day and all the time period before that it's it, the astrology is a lot is a idolatry that's what they're, they're turning to they're going back because again the israelites did that constantly i'm afraid of you lest i have bestowed upon you labor in vain brethren i beseech you be as i am for i am as ye are ye have not injured me at all you know how thoroughly uh, i'm sorry you know how through infirmity of the flesh i preached the gospel unto you at the first and my temptation which is was in my flesh ye despise not nor rejected but received me as an angel of god even as christ jesus where is then the blessed ye spake of for i bear you record that if it had if it had been possible you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me am i therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Do you see here, Paul is, beside, I mean, can you just feel it in your stomach? I mean, your stomach, your stomach should be turning right now. If we're sitting beside Paul and he's like, ay, ay, ay. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you, my little children, of whom I travail and birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me your desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of a bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of a free woman was born by promise. Just as the Messiah was promised to us in Isaiah. Um, which which things are an allegory for these are two covenants the one from mount sinai which gendereth to bondage which is agar i don't know what agar is so let's look that up allegory okay well agar doesn't have a that's not a it's not in it's not in my uh, concordance here because that's not a greek word so maybe it may be a man I, I don't know what it is maybe at the end we can go to webster's dictionary and see about it uh webster dictionary of 1828 that is for this Agar is, oh, it's a mount in Sinai in Arabia and answers to and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. It's a mount. I still don't know why that wouldn't have been in the concordance. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry. Thou that travailest not for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac, was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture, cast down the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So that's the son of, that's Jesus. Son of the free woman and the son of Jesus. The promise was made to Mary. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. All right, Galatians 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. <clears throat> Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. He's really the whole thing. It really boils down to the circumcision because the Jews are circumcising everybody. Well, all men, obviously. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ 
is become of no effect. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. These guys are so full with this whole circumcision thing. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth. The persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaven the whole lump. So he's saying, you're, you've turned away from my word, and the, the Jews have put a little leaven, and it's ruined the whole bunch of you. The Jews are saying, oh, no, 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 no. You have to follow the law, the Torah. You know, the Messiah has not come. That's not, that's, so you see what's going on here? It just takes a little lie to corrupt everything. Well, corrupted all of Galatia. Which, um, so I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that trouble you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. So, you know, if you're giving out this false doctrine, if you're a false teacher, whatever's going on, if this, this person is, is changing the word, you know, taking away or adding to whatever, he will be held accountable. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, by, but by love serve one another. Serve one another. Charity. For all law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this... Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the new law. The new law Jesus gave us, love your neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you will, you will be not consumed one of another. Then I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So here, by having the Holy Spirit in you, it's going to go against any fleshly desires. You're not going to be of the flesh. You're not going to be of this world. You're not going to want fornication. And it's going to, it's going to tell us here. Let's just, just go ahead and read. The spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary. The one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that you would. If you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Okay. Let's go through this through the concordance, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Ready? The concordance, adultery um, is sex with anything, uh, people, animals, uh, relatives, fornication, illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, close relatives. Uh, a divorced person. It also, fornication means the worship of idols, the of the defilement of idol idolatry, or eating sacrifices offered to idols, lasciviousness, unbridled lust, wantonness, shamelessness, insolence, uncleanness. In a moral sense, the impurity of lustful, luxurious, profligate living, impure motives. Now, I know we read these in James, but let's just still go ahead and read it in um, Paul here. Envyings, okay, verse 21. Envying, murder, drunkenness, rev revelings, and such, like the which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's go to the concordance. Let's see, drunkenness, intoxication, envying. Five three five five. Um, uh, ill will at others on account of some supposed superiority. Let's see, murder, self-explanatory, but it just says murder to slaughter, reveling, a, a nocturnal and riotous procession of half-drunken and frolicsome, <laughs> frolicsome fellows who, after supper, parade through the streets. Basically, a parade. Let's finish out Galatians 5 here. So here's how he tells you to be. So he just told us this is not to be. So if you're if you're living of the flesh, 
you're going to want to do all those things we just said, what we just read. But if you're living by the Spirit, you know, you're living by the fruit of the Spirit, here's what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. There's no, you can live like that. There's no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, empty glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So that's how you be in this world and not of this world. Meekness, temperance, joy, peace, faith. All right, so let's finish on Galatians 6, brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Let's just look up meekness, make sure we're all clear. Meekness, 4, 2, 3, 6, gentleness, mildness, meekness. So gentle and mild. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him the teaching and all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, he shall also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting it's not worth it we're only in this world what 70 80 maybe 90 years it's just not worth it who who wants to enjoy 78 whatever your years are here on earth why partake in the fleshly desires the lust all of that and give away life everlasting it doesn't it, i mean so you just can't do the ways of this world. So basically anything that exists on planet Earth is the ways of this world. <laughs> you know, let us not be weird. I mean, you wouldn't want to. The Holy Spirit doesn't want to go to a rock concert or a, a music uh, festival or a, I don't know, go on and on with that. You know, uh, can I think here like the Golden Globe Awards, whatever those award shows are called. And they give these little idols to people. Unbelievable. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. See how a large letter I have written unto you with my own hands. Now, Paul's just writing out. In this day in Galatia, around 50 AD, when this is going on, um, it was a lot to acquire the amount of papyrus it took to write that, the amount of cuttlefish ink, um, the amount of time, and then what it's going to take to, to get this letter somewhere where it's not been added to or taken from. In other words, what is the postal service that you're going to trust? And if you understand in those days and the spies and how everything was looked over and watched and corrupted. Anyways, if you understand what, what he's going to have to go through, what kind of money he's going to have to give to secure the, that this letter arrives to Galatia in a uncorrupted, um, not not something you know blotted out or or added to. So you have you'd have to read about postal history to understand what kind of what what the what the links that people had to go through and the money that they had to go through in order for a letter to arrive uh, unread and un un you know tampered with. It was a big deal. It was a huge deal. So that's what he's pointing out here. Look, I love you so much. I care about you so much that I have taken the time to write like one of my longest, you know, a really long letter here to you guys about this, you know, these, these small little things. Because it's really only about, it's only about the law. It's about the laws of the tour and it's about circumcision. And he's spending a great deal of his time writing on this instead of really you know, trying to help them to remember, this is what I taught you about faith, about the spirit of Jesus Christ. That's what I taught you. They, they, these guys are perverted. Let's finish it out. Galatians 6, verse 12. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, 
that they may glory in your flesh, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them mercy and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Unto the Galatians, written from Rome. And all God's people said, stay in the word.